emergence of a banana republic. Thank you, sir. Shri Tiruchi Shiva. 14 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. Sir, I stand to oppose this bill very strongly for it infringes upon the basic structure of doctrine by crushing the federalism which is the soul of Indian democracy. Sir, this attempt of this government is yet another, a strike on federalism. It is unwarranted, untenable, it is undemocratic, unjustifiable, unfederal and unconstitutional. Just. Sir, why I am saying all these things? Unwarranted. Well done, Sir, after 1991, when the Delhi was granted special status, BJP came to power. <coughs> Mr. Madanlal Kurana and later Sagib Singh Verma, who were the chief ministers, they instituted for full statehood for Delhi. And later, sir, in 2003, August 13th, August of 2003, the NDA one government introduced a bill insisting for full statehood for Delhi. So when they are ruling, they want full statehood for Delhi. Then what necessity for this ordinance or this bill, sir? After 2015, Amadmi won the election with a significant margin. Immediately after that, the union government issued a notification that service will under, services will come under the control of the union government. And that sparked a legal battle, sir, which lasted for eight years. And recently, the Supreme Court in 2018 and 2023 constitutional bench has given a unanimous judgment in favor of the Delhi government that they have got every power. Now this bill is attempting to override, overturn the Supreme Court judgment and override the powers of the state government. Sir, we should just look at it in this manner, sir. So whenever they are in double standard, when they are in power, they want something. It is intolerance to say very shortly, if an opposition party is ruling, they will be disturbed by the governors. If it is a union territory, the lieutenant governor will take all the powers and will not allow the state government to function. So in this situation, where is democracy? Sir, our constitution, as you know very well, sir, has given a structure of uh, federalism, which gives the uh, very importance to the regional aspirations can be represented and realized by state governments, and which cannot be done by a centralized union government. Sir, it has also established a mechanism of triple chain accountability. The people hold the legislators accountable, the legislature holds the government accountable, and the government holds the officers accountable. But now, the officers are not under the control of the government of union territory. So what is the use of being there? So this triple chain accountability is broken by way of this attempt. This not only I say here, sir, the Supreme Court has also emphasized very strongly. It should not be severed on any account. Sir, now coming detail into the bill. Why we are opposing? What are the contentious issues? What are the reservations we have? All others have spoken, sir, but we have to enter, enlighten it. Number one, this bill attempts to establish a national capital civil services authority. As everyone said, it will consist of three members under the chairmanship of the chief minister and two officers, home secretary and chief secretary. Who are they? Appointed by the union government. Obviously, one can understand what will be the outcome. The quorum is two and the majority will be the decision. Sir, I have moved an amendment, which even it may be passed. I think with who? If at all it is passed, even it won't be of use, sir. Because even if the authority with a majority gives a suggestion to the lieutenant governor, he can reject it. So ultimately it goes there. The authority becomes redundant and the chief ministership becomes lesser than a rubber stamp. We are very sorry to say these words. A chief minister elected by the government has to fulfill the obligations by the mandate has been given to him. But whereas he is not able to have control, 
Sir, Delhi has been the nucleus of power from Mughals to British. Can anyone say any ruler has ruled without control on their officers, whether he or she? But now this bill paves the way. Sir, where we are heading towards? The government which is accountable to the, people, to the legislature and the government which can hold account, the officers accountable, now they don't have any uh, control over the officers. Number two, sir, the Council of Ministers, the Cabinet. Earlier, sir, the notes which are prepared are prepared by the ministers. And it will be taken over there. And after the decision, it will be forwarded to the Lieutenant Governor. It is vetted by the Law Department. Now that the Secretary will overlook the minister, and overall, the Cabinet, which is the Council of Ministers, if they take a decision, the Chief Secretary will come and say, it doesn't come under law or under the rules of procedure, and he will take it to the Lieutenant Governor, who can alter it or reject it. So first, the Chief Ministership become, became redundant. Now the Council of Ministers become redundant. Number three, sir. Any minister, if he takes any decision, the Secretary is the Supreme. If the Secretary doesn't agree with the decision of the minister concerned, without the consent of the minister, he can take it directly to the Chief Secretary or to the Lieutenant Governor, so the ministership also becomes redundant. Number four, sir. Delhi is also like other states run by some 50 uh, around statutory authorities, corporations, and commissions. This include industry, tourism, everything. It comes under uh, even uh, uh, transport, water, sewerage, women rights, child rights, and all. All these positions, the chairpersons and the members, were earlier nominated by the government, by, uh, uh, sorry, by the lieutenant governor on the advice of the government. But now, sir, hereafter, these positions will be appointed only by the lieutenant governor. The government has to sit with folded hands. Sir, one by one, just though the authority is established, the authority has no say, and even in the authority, the chief minister has no say. Number two, the council of ministers, the cabinet becomes redundant. The minister becomes redundant. Number four, sir, all the commissions, all the corporations, all the statutory authorities will be appointed by the lieutenant governor. And then, proroguing and summoning also comes to the power of the lieutenant Earlier, sir, the Council of Ministers will decide a date and they will represent to the Lieutenant Governor and he will summon. Now that Lieutenant Governor can do. So the government cannot, if at all an urgent issue has to be resolved, if the Assembly has to be convened, the Chief Minister or the Council of Ministers has no power. Sir, kindly tell us, we are not just accusing the government or pointing fingers what you are doing is wrong, but kindly explain to us why all these things happen. A government which has, which has been elected by the people, they have to cater to the needs of the people. They only know the local people's aspirations. That's why we are pleading for state autonomy. When the voice for decentralization is going up and up, this government is traveling on the opposite direction. Powers are centralized on, in the union government again and again. What will happen? It will get broken. Sir, India, which is known for federalism, sir, Everything is under threat now. Secularism is under threat now. Especially, sir, we are very much concerned that this bill again strikes at the very root of federalism. Sir, let me quote Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar. Ambedkar, in November 4, 1948, this bill disregards the constitutional morality. That's what I'm trying to drive at. Dr. Ambedkar on November 4th, 1948, in the Constituent Assembly, quote, while everybody recognizes the diffusion of constitutional morality for the peaceful working of a democratic constitution, there are two things interconnected with it, which are not, unfortunately, generally recognized. One is that the form of administration as a connection with the form of the Constitution. The other is that it is perfectly possible 
to pervert the constitution, sir, underscore. The other is that it is perfectly possible to pervert the constitution without changing its form by merely changing the form of administration and to make it inconsistent and opposed to the spirit of the constitution. Sir, it is not a statement by Tirchi Siva. It is Dr. Ambedkar in the constituent assembly. And emphasizing that, the Supreme Court in its judgment in 2018 refers to the constitution in these words, quote, constitutional morality is that fulcrum which acts as an essential check upon the high functionaries and citizens alike, as experience has shown that unbridled power without any checks and balances would result in a despotic and tyrannical situation which is antithetical to the very idea of democracy. <coughs> Sir, what is going on now? Unbridled powers without any checks. Everything is taken over. Sir, we are told now and then again and again, many a time, that many of the acts that has been enacted during this regime, sir, are transgressing into the powers of the state governments. It is taking away the powers of the state governments. All are heaped in the, with the union government. So this is what the Supreme Court has also said, unbridled power with no checks and balances. Same thing, Dr. Ambedkar has also told, sex, sorry, constitutional morality, this disregards constitutional morality. Sir, I earnestly appeal to my fellow co some co colleagues of some political parties who may support the government's decision. My earnest appeal, as Mr. Singh we told, sir, sir, we are living in an area where there are 100 huts, all thatched roofs. If the last house is burning, the person sleeping in the first house will not sleep. He will go run and put out the fire with the fire brigade. Yes, sir. It is not only to help him, sir, but to safeguard his own self. If it is not put out, that fire will slowly come and at last it will affect them. So it has to be thought over. Sir, all these years, we have preserved our independence. We have preserved our democracy. Sir, often you used to say, sir, very proudly, India, the largest democracy in the world. Yes, sir. The largest democracy now is in peril. Why so many charges against the state governments? No state government is able to function on its own. It's not able to enact a law. If something is passed in an assembly, it is not endorsed by the governor. So they are not able to serve the people's needs. Only they, they, only they know what the people need. That's why the state governments have been formed. But now that either the union government encroaches or through the governor, it is trying to upset. Sir, all these things have to be kept in mind. Again, I say all the reservations and contentions we have raised are not with a partisan mood, sir, but it has to be justified. Why all these things have been done? Why all the powers have been taken from a state government? Why the chief ministership has been reduced to the level of, uh, uh, sorry, to say the word rubber stamp, and more or less, everything is redundant, sir. What is the big idea of getting along? Sir, let me conclude, sir. I've already told them once, now that, not in any other manner, in the democratic process, one day they will be out of power. Yes. And, yes. And, and every day, every day they will be lamenting and regretting for all those laws they have enacted. It is not far behind, sir. 2024. The India Alliance will win. Yes. We will be there. Yes. And sir, we will restore Delhi its autonomy. Thank you very much. Let me go. Don't be too quick. It is not too quick for me. <laughs>